Hey guys, welcome back to the Jen Bug Handmade Podcast. I'm Jen. You can find me on Ravelry as Knit and Jen, and you can find me on Instagram as Jen Bug Handmade. Welcome back. It's so good to uh, not actually see you all with my eyeballs again, but see you here coming back again to watch another knitting podcast. Fun times. So, uh, I just wanted to say thanks again, everyone, for watching. It's been so much fun talking to you guys and getting to know everyone. So let's uh, let's talk about some things. So I just wanted to tell you guys, first of all, before we get into the knitting, big news, okay? My kids are back in daycare. Yes, as of this week. Um, they're going now... A couple of days a week again just like they did before the pandemic you know now that we're both vaccinated well my husband's getting a second shot tonight um it was just time uh poor my older boy he just turned four and he's been a little moody thing and the minute we told him he was going back that he just lit up so what what does that mean for me and the podcast and knitting it means i actually have time to plan this out a little bit better um and to actually sit down and take my time and, you know, just have fun. So, and a little bit more time to sew, a little bit more uninterrupted time to knit. So I am very excited. Uh, they were with us for 398 days. We cal we um, we calculated it the last day that he went to school because it was the day before his birthday last year. And to the day they went back. So, yes, great time. So anyways, I'm very excited to have more uninterrupted crafting time on my hands. So anyways, other news. Um, let's get into some knitting, shall we? So we can talk about some fun things first. And uh, let's see. So first of all, I wanna talk to you guys about my newest shawl design that will be coming out uh, probably sometime next week. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure to record a little video when it does go up on Ravelry because I know some of you guys aren't on Instagram. Um, you can always follow me there. That's why I do a lot of stories. Um, I like stories. They're fun. Um, you can always find me there to see what I'm working on and, you know, what's going on with me and everything. But I will make a little video, uh, just, just a, you know, short one, short and sweet on the podcast for when I release new uh, designs. So that way you guys won't miss out on coupon codes so when I release them so make sure you subscribe and hit the little bell so that way you will be notified when I put a new podcast up and then you'll know hey she's got a new pattern out let me go check it out and if you want to get it at a discount you can get the coupon code from the podcast or the little YouTube video so anyways yes subscribe so that way you will not miss it and um, this will be coming out next week I've already written the pattern I just uh, am wanting to knit it one more time or at least get get it started just to make sure it all makes sense and we are good to go. So without further ado, this is my new shawl. Let me make sure I have it the right way before I show you guys. And it is called Raincoats and Recipes. Um, I know you guys were, I, you know, left you hanging there with what the name was and it is Gilmore Girls inspired the name because uh, I love it. I just, I saw the umbrella stitch that I was doing in this and that just popped into my head. And that's the name of one of the episodes in Gilmore Girls. And it's the episode where Luke and Lorelai finally get together where she opens the dragonfly in. So it's super sweet. But anyways, yeah, this is the shawl. And this is knit in Skein Cocaine's Perfect Pairing Set. The colorway is seashells. Let me stand up for you guys. The colorway is seashells. And holy crap, it is gorgeous. Not only is this like such a beautiful color, the yarn. I'm talking about the yarn, not my pattern. I'm not, I'm not that vain, y'all. Um, but yeah, not only is this yarn just super beautiful, but also like there's just something about it like the slub it's a slub yarn so it's 90 10 um fingering weight merino nylon slub and then the other yarn is uh surrey alpaca and silk lace oh my goodness i cannot wait i have more yarn coming for this and i cannot wait to knit the second one because and it's 
This pattern is not hard, okay? If you know how to knit lace, um, lace stitches, which is all it is is yarn overs, some purl two togethers, nothing crazy, okay? If you know how to knit lace, you can totally make this pattern. It is not hard. Um, you know, I wouldn't, I mean, it might be a little challenging if it were your first lace pattern, but it's not unknittable for sure. But this yarn is so soft and lightweight. I am just in love with it. I really am. I cannot wait to knit another one. And it, it was so much fun to make this up. It has been so much fun dying. I'm not dying. Gosh, I will not be dying yarn, you guys. There are other amazing people that do it for me, okay, that I can buy their yarn. But I've been having so much fun designing and, you know, coming up with patterns. And I really do. I just, oh, I'm in love with this shawl. I know it doesn't match my shirt, but I don't care. Um, I'll just wear all the pink, okay, all the pink. And funny, so my husband, anytime he sees like this peachy, um, it's not peachy, I don't know, it's kind of just this light pink. He always like, in, in, it's uh, anytime he sees this color, I'm like, oh, I love that color. And he goes, that looks like flesh. And I'm like, what is wrong with you? What is wrong with you? <laughs> but anyways, this is not, it is beautiful. Cannot wait. I have, um, it's like a hot pink color coming. So I'm very excited about that. And I'm going to send up a skein to my mom bug, um, or a set for her to knit it up too. So yeah, so this will be coming out next week, you guys, raincoats and recipes. And oh, another thing about the kids being in daycare is I can podcast a little bit more. I'm going to try and come to you, come to you. I'm going to try and upload a video every week now just to keep it a little bit shorter and sweeter and, you know, talk to you guys a little bit more often. So yeah, that's exciting. So hopefully by next week I'll have, you know, cast on the second one and which I, I know I will, but I'll cast that on and knit that one up a bit and you can see it in another color. And that color is going to be more, um, less variegated and more salt, you know, whatever more plain, I guess, but not plain because it's going to be gorgeous. I know. So I cannot wait. So yeah, stay tuned, y'all. Stay tuned. This was really fun to knit. So anyways, this, this is done. Um, and let's move on. Look, I don't even know what to do with myself because my kids aren't here. I'm like, it's just, it's just such a weird feeling after being with them for almost 400 days straight. I went to the grocery store this morning. Um, and let me tell you, it, it like, I, and I haven't even shopped in the grocery store in, I don't know how long, because we've been doing Instacart all year. I mean, it was just so nice. Okay. It was just so nice to go in the store and get what I needed real fast. And it took like less than 30 minutes. It was amazing. So anyways, moving on to more knitting. Okay. All right. Let's see. So this is in my... Hohe and Co. and Lola Bean Yarn Co. bean bag, which I told you guys last time, but the zipper on this one is not not my favorite for knitting. So this this is still going to turn into a purse, but I already had my waffles with cream pattern in here from the last time and the needles and everything. So I just left it in this bag with the same needles. But I am working on another one of my waffles with cream, which I talked about on my last podcast. I've knit a bit more now. And of course, I'm always in the middle of a row, you guys, because um, that's just how I roll. So this is in Malabrigo Rios in the sunset colorway. And I'm going to knit on it a little bit so that way you guys can actually legit see it. Um, so I love this Malabrigo Rios. This yarn is super squishy. It's super affordable. I think it's around $15 a skein. It is so affordable for... And all of Malabrigo is. Um, it's gorgeous yarn and at an affordable price. So if you're looking to get, you know, a more luxury yarn, but you're still like, man, that's, that's like a lot of money, you know, $30 a skein, this and that. Rios is a beautiful option. I really, I really love Malabrigo. But, and I love this orange color because I think that, you know, it'll be nice in the fall with my jean, you know, jean button-up shirts and leggings. I love wearing button-up shirts, by the way. Like, they just comfy. And I don't know. It's just a style that I like to wear. So I have a few denim-colored shirts um, that I like to wear with my leggings because leggings is life, y'all. Um, so I think this will look really cute with, you know, 
pair of leggings and my uh, jean, jean shirt and some flats. I'm, you know, this is my fashion, right? I'm just looking, looking cute, cute, but also being as comfortable as possible. So anyways, and also let me talk about these earrings real quick while I'm trying to knit the end of this row. These, I love, love these ladies. These are from Rosie and Jean. They are on Instagram and they have a website, which I will link below. Um, they're super sweet. Like they're, have become my friends on Instagram and just through a coworker of mine was wearing their earrings. And then, you know, when I was doing scrub hats, they like bought some scrub hats from me to give to our own nurses. Like when the pandemic started, which is just crazy. And, you know, they're just really sweet two sweet girls with big hearts and they're makers. These are clay earrings. They're made out of clay. They hand make all of these. So they're really fun. And I love, I'm going to get closer. I love these Daisy. I think these are Daisy Dukes. Um, love them. I get so many compliments on these and I have, I have a lot of pairs of their earrings. They're like, they're around like in between 18 ish to 20 ish, $28 on average, I'd say just depending on the style and everything. So yeah, just wanted to talk about them. I'm actually, and I'll talk about this more in a, in a little bit later when I get into giveaway announcements and stuff, but I'm having them make some earrings for us, uh, some custom earrings for uh, just a surprise giveaway that I'm going to be doing for my birthday. Uh, hint, they're Harry Potter related, but I'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, I'm really excited, really excited for that. So anyways, now that I am at the end of this shawl, let's talk about this bad boy. So my waffles with cream pattern, it's been out on Ravelry a little while and it's, you know, it's been really fun you know, seeing it get knit up. I know Barb of Naughty Yarnies, she knit hers up and she knotted the ends instead of put pom poms on. And I thought that that was so cute. So I am totally, I'm knotting this one. Like I'm gonna just knot the ends. So anyways, oh see, and it's stuck on the zipper, so. <laughs> Anyways, yes, here it is in the sunset colorway. So you can kind of see this a little bit better, see the stitches. And I totally, look y'all, I messed up my own pattern, okay? I totally knit like two extra rows right, where is it, right here in the rib. Whatever, it doesn't matter. I don't care, I'm not ripping it out. No one's ever gonna notice that unless they're up close in my bosoms and uh, that that would only be my husband and uh, he would not notice this, okay? So I'm not ripping that out. So yeah, here it is. I am excited. So I'm gonna, like I said, I'm gonna do like knots in the ends instead of putting pom-poms on this one. And I think it's gonna be super cute. So thank you, Barb, for like that revelation of, you know, my pattern, I, which is so cool, which is why I love seeing other people knit things because everybody does it a little bit different and it inspires you as well so pretty cool but yeah this is super squishy and super soft so I'm very excited very excited for this to be done all right so that's that and and I haven't really even worked on this very much I just pulled it out the past day or so and knit on it because I was knitting on my Ducotch sweater which I talked about last podcast as well and I totally knit a few extra rows, which I'm about to talk about. So I was like, man, I'm gonna have to rip this back and I don't wanna do it yet. So I just picked this up and knit on it because this is super mindless, super easy. So if you're looking for a nice, mindless, easy pattern, this is it. And someone asked me, could they knit this in different colors? Absolutely. This pattern can be knit. You can use gradient yarn. You can use variegated yarn, speckled yarn, solid colored yarn. You could even do like, um, like an ombre, that would be cool. You could do like DK mini skeins. This thing is versatile, okay? So this is one of those patterns where you can adapt it and do what you want. And I highly encourage it. I think it's awesome. So there is that. Yeah, this, this bag is totally, I love this bag. Okay, I love this bag, I do. But it's totally become, gonna become a purse instead. It has a strap with it that I have down, down in my, I have like a whole dresser or it's like a, one of those tall dressers. It's like this antique white dresser in my guest bedroom downstairs. And literally the bottom is just full of bags. Like, cause I love bags like tote bags and 
whatever, just just bags, full of bags. Not my nice bags. My nice bags stay like in the mud room or whatever, but in my closet. But you know, just big old tote bags. So the bottom is just full of tote bags and the top is full of all of the hand knits that we wear a lot. All of my really nice shawls that I don't want like squished up in the drawer, I have them hanging actually over here in my craft room on some like decorative hooks. So, and uh, that's another thing that I wanna do is get you guys finally a tour of my craft room. Now that my kids are like gone for a whole day at a time, I will be able to do that. So I'm very excited. But anyways, yeah, I have a whole dresser full of bags and knits. It's like my favorite thing. And it's a beautiful antique dresser that I got like at the, one of the antique shops down here in Raleigh. Raleigh. So anyways, there's that. This is going to be a purse soon. It'll be perfect. It'll be the perfect purse size. So anyways, yeah, it's been driving me crazy in it now this thing. I'm not gonna lie. Anyways, moving on. Let's talk about my new cock sweater. So this bad boy, let me tell you, it is awesome. I've been having a ton of fun knitting it. Um, the yarn is beautiful. So the, here's what the yarn looks like. This is Hedgehog Fibers Merino DK and I love it. I love it. This is another squishy, just nice, robust yarn. And here it is. I am so I'm basically at the sleeve split, but I have to rip out a couple of rows because I was just not paying attention and I did my math wrong and I totally went a, an extra couple of rows. So, and I'll work on that today. This, this is it. It's kind of hard to see it right now because it's all wonky up on the needles. But once I get the sleeve split done, you'll be able to see it a little bit better. Next week, you guys will be able to see it a little bit better. So there's the sleeves right there. And then now you can actually like see the colors in it because it's really hard to photograph this in the, in the bowl in the skein. So I love it. This is going to be so much fun. This is going to be like my summer, just spring, awesome pullover. So I will say this pattern, um, it's not like very beginner friendly. I've never knit a Kate Davies pattern and I've always wanted to. She's a beautiful designer. I'm pretty sure she's from Scotland, which is awesome because Outlander, okay? Um, so I'm pretty sure she's from Scotland and she has beautiful, beautiful designs, but it's, like I said, it's not very beginner friendly. I definitely have to read everything a few times just to make sure like I know what I'm doing. And she had, like, it, she's brilliant though. The way you do the neckline, um, you start it flat and then you join in the round, which I thought was very interesting and cool. I'd never done that before on a sweater. So I really like that. I wish that I would have, I am alternating two skeins on this because, you know, with hand dyed yarn, you should, um, especially if you have several balls and except for a skein cocaine, she has these beautiful freaking, um, baby grands of fingering weight yarn where it's all one yarn or one ball. It's like 1700 yards y'all. Oh my God. I'm going to get one. But I'm pretty sure uh, Gina thinks I'm like a stalker now because I can't stop ordering her yarn. <laughs> but um, I'm going to get one. It's, it's happening. That daffodil one was talking to me, man. So anyways, that's cool. But yes, if you're knitting with hand dyed yarn, you really should alternate the skeins because every skein is a beautiful butterfly. It is unique and you don't, you know, I'm sure you guys know this, but you don't want it to get all splotchy. You can, you'll be able to tell where you, if you didn't alternate, you would be able to tell the different skeins. So I find two skeins, like I look at my skeins and I kind of like just pick them out. Like these two would go good together. You know, they're a little bit different and these two are a little bit different, but kind of similar to these two. So yeah, alternate your skeins. But anyways, I somehow alternated on the front of the sweater, which don't like you can't really tell which is good but you can kind of tell right here you see this this is where I alternated I wish I didn't do that but whatever I'm not ripping it out because I'm too lazy for that so you can see where I've been alternating right here and once I do the sleeve split I'm gonna move it I've already done it now so I'm just gonna go with it but um I'm gonna move it to I the underarm that would have been a nice a nicer spot to alternate. So I'll do it down the side of the sweater after I split for the sleeve. So yeah, 
This has been really fun. I can't wait to knit this up. It's not hard. Don't get me wrong. It's not hard, but you definitely have to read and like kind of understand what she's having you do. If that makes sense. Oh, also, let me tell you guys. She did not put a suggested needle size in the pattern. It just says needle size to obtain gauge. I'm like, this bitch is trying to make me knit a gauge swatch, okay? Not gonna do it. Not gonna do it, okay? That's bad. It's a very bad knitter, okay, to not knit a gauge swatch, but I don't care because this is gonna be oversized anyways. So I know it's gonna fit. Watch, watch me knit this and it doesn't fit, okay? Then, then it would be my fault, but I ain't knit no gauge swatch, so, you know, I went on Ravelry, and on Ravelry, it has size 6 needles on her project, and on everybody else's project, it has size 6 needles, so size 6 needles it was. Ain't knit no gauge swatch, uh-uh. So anyways, yeah, that, I've never seen the pattern say just needle size for suggested gauge. I was like, lol, what? You gonna have to tell me a number. Anyways, that is that. And that is all I've actually worked on in terms of knitting. Uh, I have gotten some things, okay. So first of all, let me tell you, my, my fabric from Spoonflower came in. So I ordered some fabrics because I wanted to make you guys some more bags. And my husband wanted some pillows for this new chair in his office. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to sew him those up. But let me tell you what happened. So let me, let me sip my coffee first. Look. Don't be making fun of my Trenta cup, okay? This is from yesterday. I didn't drink this all in one day. Just saying. Although I did have two cups of coffee before I bought this. Um, I don't know. I don't know. This is basically like a pitcher of coffee, and I love it. Don't judge me. It's a sugar-free syrup, okay? Anyways, so this is the bag I made myself, and I love it. Oh my god, I love it. And I was gushing over how awesome this fabric was and this and that. I totally told you guys the wrong fabric name, okay? I said this was dogwood denim. It is not. It is the cotton canvas, uh, cypress cotton canvas. That's what this is. So I'm going to fix that in my description on the other YouTube video. So I hope none of y'all went and bought the dogwood denim. I apologize if you did. I'm the kind of person like, like the other day we ordered some barbecue. I ordered it at the wrong location. That's like an hour away off the website because I'm, that's me. That's how I do. Okay. So yeah. Anyway, so we get there and they're like, we don't have an order for you. And I'm like, what? Um, this is not dogwood denim and it's cypress cotton canvas and it's beautifully, beautifully soft and squishy and amazing. Right? So I was like loving my bag. I'm like, I want to make you guys some more bags. My stupid self ordered the dogwood denim. This is my husband's fabric for his pillows, okay? And it comes in and I'm like cutting it for some of the bags I'm making you guys. And I'm like, man, this is stiff. And not only was it stiff and felt different, it was very off print. I'll put a picture here of when I was cutting y'all's fabric. So I got mad. I was like, man, I am gonna be blasting spoon flour and this and that, look at this. This is um drumstick brushes. My husband is a drummer. Okay, I'm like going off on tangents today, so just bear with me. Lots of stories. So they're like fun drumstick brushes uh, and mallets and drumsticks. Looking at it. Fun, right? So there's that. And then I got, you can fill a yard on there. If it's in the same fabric collection, you can get more than one print in the yard. So I got half a yard of that and half a yard. These are snare drums to make pillows for his new orange couch in his office, his little orange couch. So I got this and it came in. I'm like, man, this is like stiff. I'm like, what the hell? Spoonflower like sent me the wrong fabric or like it's not the same and this and that. And it's not bad. Believe me, this is not bad fabric at all, but it's straight up denim. Like it feels like jeans. Okay. And so here I am tripping because I thought I had ordered dogwood denim the last time because I don't know what's wrong with me. And I'm like getting on their message in Spoonflower and I'm like, look, it, because they have like a chat and I'm like, y'all's fabric was like horrible this time. Like it was so different and it was so off print and I'm like all mad and this and that. And the lady, I was like, it's not the same as my last order. And she's like, hey, we're happy to help. She's super nice. Um, she's like, I have noticed you've never ordered dogwood denim before. And I'm like, oh really? I was like, well, what did I order the last time? She's looking at my order history. She's like, you ordered the Cypress cotton canvas. I'm like, 
okay, my bad. I'm like, I apologize, ma'am. I, I'm very sorry for uh, being mad at you, Spoonflower. I was like, but it was still very much off print and I sent her a picture. And so they gave me some spoon dollars. So now I can get more, even more fabric, but I'm still gonna use this. Um, he's just gonna have some denim pillows, but it's fine. It's not like, it's like a little couch. So we're not gonna be in there like napping on it or anything like that. It's basically a, a little couch so I can sit in there and talk to him while he's working, you know, so anyways. I will still be making him pillows out of this jean fabric. And this is actually a very nice fabric. It's super sturdy. It's gonna be perfect for the bags that I'm making. Um, so yeah, anyways, there's my rant. Don't be mad at Spoonflower, it wasn't their fault. Although it was very much off, off print. Like it was very crooked, the printing. That annoyed me. So, okay, so. I also got, I filled a yard with this beautiful sheep fabric that I found because I thought it was absolutely adorable. And so I made this for the next giveaway. Isn't this so cute? Oh, I love it, I love it. And I actually have some extra. So I'm wondering, and like I said, this is actually really good sturdy fabric for bags, so it's not even like a big deal. It's just not as soft as the canvas, but it actually is probably gonna um, be a little bit, like stand up a little bit more stiffly. So yeah, that's cool. Yeah, and I got this, the inside is out of this farm print that I got at my local fabric shop. I am so blessed. I have a little local fabric shop down the road and the owner is like, we were all cool because when the pandemic started, I like asked her if I could get some material to make masks and for the nurses who I work with because the CDC was like, y'all can wear bandanas. And I'm like, oh, uh, what? So anyways, she enlisted like all these people that she knew and they helped me sew all these masks for the nurses in my unit. And then they started doing masks in the community and all this stuff. It was really cool. So now we really tight, me and Bonnie down the road. I got this beautiful fabric from her shop to line your bags. So, or the bags that I'm making. So that'll be fun. Yeah, so that's what's on the inside here. Super cute. And it's just a little wedge. This would be perfect. This actually would fit my waffles with cream perfectly, I feel like. It's just a bag. It'd be perfect for a one or two skein shawl. I love it. So I have got this color. And I'll talk about this. This will be for the giveaway later. Um, we'll talk about that with the giveaway stuff. But I also got some pink because I love pink, obviously. I mean, look at me. Look at me, okay? Pink. So I'm going to make a few of these. I'm going to make myself one of these because I'm just in love. So basically what I want to know is, and I'm going to keep making bags to give away to you guys and this and that. But now that my kids are in school, I'm kind of like itching to sew a little bit again. So would you guys like to see like some bags for sale um, out of these beautiful fabrics that I find on Spoonflower? If I did do it, it would be like, here's what I have, ready to ship, already sewn up, like no pressure. It's, and you know, it'd be just as, as I feel like it. And I would probably not do custom order. Sorry, you guys, I like that, that stuff stresses me out. But if, you know, you guys are interested in getting a few of the bags uh, that I make and, you know, having them for your knitting and not just for giveaways, let me know below uh, so I can kind of get an idea of if there's an interest because I might be interested in sewing a little bit because the bags are really fun to make. These are so fun to make. So let me know what you guys think. Look how, how adorable this is. I can't wait to sew this up. Anyways. So that was my spoon flower experience, guys. I mean, I have a love-hate relationship with spoon flower because I love that you can, the fabrics on there, the, all the prints are were designed by designers. So, you know, you're supporting designers, which I think is really cool. Like, you know, you, you can go on there and upload a picture of your dog and put it on fabric, I'm pretty sure. So it's cool to be able to support other people um, like independent designers, basically just like independent yarn dyers, right? And so that's cool, but it does take a while sometimes to get your fabric. And I have noticed this is not the very first time that the fabric's been a little bit off print. I ordered a lot from them when I was doing scrub hats and that happened a lot, but I still, I still love them. 
still love them. So I was really mad when I thought that they gave me a different fabric, but then when I realized it was my fault, I was like, oh yeah, okay, sorry. So anyways, more stash enhancement. Let's talk about this. This is from the Lemonade Shop. This is Toxic Oreo, and this is some sock yarn I snagged up. Look how pretty that is. Toxic Oreo, come on. And I've knit with the Lemonade Shop before in a shawl that I made, and I think some socks, I'm pretty sure. And I love it. Although I did, this is another thing where it was my fault. When I bought this, I thought I was buying the 7525 uh, Merino Nylon yarn, and I bought the 8020 yarn. So I was like, oh no. I, I'm like, you know, because I told you guys I'm like not a fan of the two-ply sock yarn, right? Because I just wear holes right through it. So anyways, turns out I messaged her and I was like, oh my gosh, can you change it? And blah, blah, blah. And I feel bad. I always feel bad messaging anyone and changing anything because after, you know, owning like a handmade business, it's just ugh, like it. I feel bad ever asking anybody to do anything custom. But anyways. So then I went back on the website and I saw that it's four ply. Her 8020 is four ply. So I was like, okay, wait, never mind. Just leave it. My bad. Sorry. So I'm going to give this a try and knit this four ply 8020 yarn. And we shall see how it holds up. So I'm excited. Beautiful, beautiful hand dyed sock yarn. All right. And what else? Let's see. So my uh, sweet mom bug asked me, my birthday is coming up May 22nd, y'all, okay? And not that it's a big deal, but it's kind of a big deal. Birthdays can be fun, right? So she already asked me what I wanted, and I was like, uh, yarn, of course, duh. You know, what else would I want? So I really want to make, I went back and forth between making the Spark Cardigan by Andrea Mallory and the Great Love by, I think it's like Aunt Anne Strick. I'll put, I'll put it in here, but I went back and forth between the two and I'm decided I'm going to make the great love. And this pattern is just this beautiful cardigan, right? And it goes kind of like down below the butt and it's just gorgeous. And I actually have a non, like a store bought sweater that's very similar in color and style. And I love it. It's like my favorite, you know, cardigan, except that it's like store-bought so it's made from like you know an acrylic it's like from the loft or something so I'm like man it would just be so nice to have a beautiful hand-knit wool sweater out of that or out of you know in that style so my sweet mom bug sent me this homestead worsted this is from so it's from um high country wool right and if y'all haven't heard of high country wool it's Hugh Loco Nicole from Hugh Loco it's her other like more natural um, hand dyed yarn business. Not that her hand dyed yarn isn't natural or whatever. It's she has beautiful indie dyed yarns. She does the cutest, you know, chicken collections. I love her yarns. I love her yarns. Um, and she, let me tell you, I think she is so cool because she put out. If you want to ever look into how to hand dye yarn, she actually put out a video on how to do it. Like. All these dyers were like acting like, oh, it's a big secret and I'm not going to tell you I had to learn it, blah, blah, blah. You know, it's like, man, share the craft. Like, I am interested to know that, you know, not that I'm trying to hand dye yarn because at this moment in life, I'm not trying to do that. But, you know, it's really cool to see like what dyers do and go through and how they get the techniques that they do. And they're truly artists. So I thought it was really awesome of her that she made videos to show people like us how to do it yourself if you wanted to. And it really just showed me like all the work that went into it and how much I'm like, nah, maybe I don't want a hand dye yarn. <laughs> so anyways, I think that that was really cool. So I really like her. I like Nicola Hugh But yes, look how beautiful. This is the natural oatmeal colorway and it's 210 yards of worsted weight yarn. And I have seven skeins of this. Okay. Oh, it's going to be so pretty. So pretty. I am, I cannot wait. I'm so excited. I like, I'm going to cast on all the sweaters, y'all. I have so many things to knit. All my dreams are sweaters. But this yarn is beautiful because it's, it's high country wool. It's 100% domestic Western wool. And it says, we support domestic family owned ranches that honor the life of every animal and emphasize land renewal. It is not a superwash yarn, but that is totally okay. This is going to be a gorgeous, just 
mm, scrumptious sweater. It's so squishy. It's super soft. And it's 70% fine merino and 30% long wool. It's a two ply. This is going to be amazing. I cannot wait. I know that I will wear the crap out of this. And I decided to go with just the solid colored great love shawl because I know that it will get lots and lots of wear. I'm still going to knit the spark cardigan by Andrea Mallory. I am. She's my, she's my, um, designer crush. I love her. I love all her patterns. Like, oh my gosh. I like everything she designs is beautiful. So anyways, but the, um, the great love pattern is pretty awesome because she has it like in little love and big love. So she has it in different lengths. It's like the same, um, type of stitch and cardigan, but it's like different lengths. So it's pretty cool. But I want the, I want the great love. I want the big, big bottom, fat bottom girl. You, you know what I'm saying? Okay. Thank you, Mom Bug. I love this. So she also sent me, I asked her if she'd snag this for me from the Nin Coop because I saw that Robin uh, posted this. Hey, Robin. What's up? So anyways, these are Easy Knit Nish Gloss because I really want to have more not so much dish dishcloths because like even though like yeah you probably should wash I have like some natural sponges okay like this is good for the environment I cannot put even like a handed dishcloth I don't think I could wash dishes with it but I want some more like bath cloths for you know washing your body so I thought this was really fun this book actually shows you like the whole first half of it is how to knit so, you know, anybody, if you're a crocheter and you watch in and you want to learn how to knit, this is a really good book for, um, for learning how to knit. Or at least like, you know, if you want some easy, fun first knitting projects, see, it tells you like how to cast on and all that. So that's pretty cool. But look at how pretty these dishcloths are. I'm so excited. And this book is by... Uh, I'm not saying this out loud. So it's by this lady and I'll put a link below and I'll put a link to the knit and coop too, because, um, Robin has amazing things in her shop. So yeah, you got some really pretty, just really pretty photography in this book too. Some really fun, different patterns in there. So that will be fun. I do have a lot of knit picks dishy, which I think is the best uh, dishcloth yarn there is, or washcloth, or whatever you want to call them. Nick, Nick Picks Dishy is awesome. I have it. I actually have several colors right here. I don't know if you can see this. Uh, this is my, I can't wait to look. It, it's, it's my color, y'all. It's pink. It's my summer pink. I also like wearing this color in the winter as well. Um, so yeah, I have a ton of this Nick Picks Dishy. Then I'm going to uh, hopefully knit up and make some dish gloss. So that's fun. Thanks, Mom Bug, for sending me some books. I'm spoiled. I have a yarn fairy. And then she also surprised me and sent me the Nomadic Knits book, which I love. I love these books. They have such beautiful patterns. I mean, look at this. This doesn't give away anything. That is so gorgeous. And then, like, also, they got, you know... Mixed drink recipes. Heck yeah, man. There was a pattern in here that, oh, look at this one. Look at this one. Gorgeous. There was a pattern in here that I was like, oh man, I would totally knit that and wear it because of course it's oversized cardigan or not cardigan, an oversized pullover that looks super comfy. Okay, here it is. Look at how beautiful this oversized I love that like collar or neckline whatever whatever you want to call it yes I love that so I might I might be knitting that too but yeah look it's oh, so beautiful and then of course there's this shawl blanket pattern in here these books I love these nomadic nets books they're beautiful so last thing well okay well two more things for stash enhancement First of all, about more eucalyptus. This is what I use for my wool wash. I love this stuff. It's the lavender scent. I've always used this. I've tried soak and like the unicorn fiber rinse. This one is my favorite. It just smells amazing and I love it. So anyways, I've got more of that for blocking. 
And I also bought, I saw that this was like on sale and I want, I've, y'all know I'm a Harry Potter nerd, right? Okay. So I'm going to be planning a big old giveaway for my birthday and it's all going to be Harry Potter themed and I might be coming out with a new pattern that might have something to do with, you know, some Harry Potter. I know there's official knits and this and that, but I had this idea and no one has done it and I'm going to do it. So there's that. But anyways, I got this book. I saw this book was on Amazon. It was like on, on, not on sale, but it was like half the price it was when it originally came out. And I never bought this book. Like why? I am such a Harry Potter nerd. Like I was 11 when I started reading Harry Potter and you know, y'all know Harry Potter is 11 when the story starts. So like I grew up with it. Like that was my generation of you know, reading. I mean, I know it's so popular in the snap, but like basically, you know, it's my soul. I'm going to be 31. So I'm a 90. I was born in 90 and you know, Harry Potter was life and it still is never going to not be over Harry Potter. So anyways, I wanted this book and I, I got one to give away for the giveaway I'm going to be doing for my birthday for you guys too. And I got myself a copy because it's only like 13 bucks, which is super cheap for like a book of this, you know, magnitude and there's like all these fun patterns in here like let's see this is the sweater that I want to make though I bought it specifically because I'm like I need this super nerdy I'll show you more of it Harry Potter sweater okay let me let me find it for you uh I just think it would be so fun and I would probably knit it up and probably the blue color as well like just because it just looks so good this doesn't give away anything look at that okay can't you see it on me this is life y'all this is life so I'm totally gonna be making that sweater eventually as well because can't stop won't stop knitting all the sweaters but yeah, it's just fun because, you know, they show you she's got, they have patterns in here for the, and this is a bunch of designers, even though it's by Tannis Gray. I think she just ended up being the tech editor and putting it all together or whatever. I don't know. But, you know, you got the house scarves and they show you how to make the Weasley sweater, which is fun. So there's that. And, you know, there's some cool mittens in here. Um... This is the one pattern I'm like, what the, what the hell is this? Okay, I will not be knitting this. Even though like, you know, I feel like they could have come up with something better for Umbridge. No offense to this designer. I'm sorry. But who is really going to knit and wear this? No one. Okay. So anyways, I'm sorry if you've knit and worn this. I'm not trying to be offensive. They got like a time turner sweater. So yeah, lots of fun stuff in this book. And... I will be giving away, I'm going to have a huge Harry Potter giveaway for my birthday and this is going to be a part of it. So stay tuned. Okay. Make sure you don't miss no podcast because it's going down on my birthday. My birthday last year really got ruined because of COVID and like, not that like, I don't really care about birthdays and they're not re usually a big deal on this and that, but I was turning 30, you know, that's a big milestone. Um, and, you know, we didn't really get to do anything. So it sucked. So this year we're going to the beach. I'm going to be getting some yarn. And we're just going to have fun. 31. It's the new 30, okay? And um, May is always crazy because not only is it my birthday, but it's also my mom bug's birthday and my dad bug's birthday and my mother-in-law's birthday and my brother-in-law's birthday and my sister's birthday. Like, May is, like, birthday crazy. Plus, Mother's Day for everyone it's insane. So May is like, kind of like the equivalent of Christmas in our family. Look at these fun Luna gloves. Oh, those are so cute. I love the colors. I would totally wear those. I'm just saying. So anyways, and this beautiful shawl. Look at this. Isn't that so pretty? Ugh. it's going down. So there is that. Um, let's see. So I wanted to talk real quick about, I have a notepad here, notepad. There's a pattern out on Ravelry for socks. If you have never made socks and you know, you want a good resource and this and that, there's a free pattern by Summer Lee and it's called I'm So Basic Socks or just look I'm So Basic. 
and the um, Ravelry search. And yeah, it's really well written. So if you're looking to make some socks and you've never knit any, I'd totally check those out. Uh, let's see. I wanted to say hi to Judy of the Autumn Acorn if you're watching. Thanks for watching my last podcast. You are super sweet and I've been enjoying watching your podcast too. I think it's really fun. Um, it's been really fun just, you know, meeting other podcasters and just people on the internet and like, it's kind of like I have friends, y'all. Oh my gosh. Um, so anyways, hey. And if you guys have a podcast and I haven't mentioned you and you've been watching, please, please, um, uh, Comment below and let me know because I'm ridiculous and, like I said, I order the wrong fabric and things. And let's see. I'm going to tell you guys a couple of patterns I've added to my Ravelry lately. I have added the Spring Honey Socks. I think these are like 2 or $3. They were super cute. Uh, the pattern is Spring Honey by This Handmade Life. Just adorable. A little honeycomb stitch at the top. Mm, I will be knitting them. And I also added Justin's Flannel by Alicia Plummer because I've been, I've had this, and I showed it in one of my podcasts and I'll talk about it a little bit more later. I have this yarn that I was making my husband a sweater out of and then I stopped making him a sweater out of it. And, and then I've been trying to decide what other pattern to make. So it's going to be Justin's Flannel now. That's the one. I actually bought the pattern, so it's happening. And I added Jane A by the Noble Thread. It was free at first, but now it's $5. It's just this beautiful garter shawl with a cute detailed edge. Adorable. Garter triangle is life. I love triangular shapes shawls, whether it's asymmetrical or um, just normal triangle. That's my jam. So, and that's a fun shawl that can be knit um, in like gradient or variegated or solid yarn. So yeah, check that out. Just wanted to mention those. So, we're going to do a new giveaway, and I'm about to announce the other giveaways as well. So this is going to be somebody's bag, okay? And what I want you to do is comment below and tell me what kind of prints you like on bags. Like, what do you like to see? Obviously, I mean, hopefully you guys like sheep because we knitters up in here and crocheters and crafters. But let me know, like, what other prints you like. Florals or bees or whatever, which is what I like, so... Let me know what kind of bag prints you like and whether or not you guys want to see some bags for sale. Let me know. Uh, let's see. So I wanted to say real quick, um, no one, blah, blah, blah. This is still unclaimed. So whips, hoes, and foes, you did win this. Okay. Um, this last chance, last chance. So if you don't reach out to me before the next podcast, I'm going to give this away to somebody else. Sorry but I can't hold on to it forever. So let me know if, you know, that you saw the podcast and give me your info to my email at jenbughandmade at gmail.com or DM me on Instagram at jenbughandmade and I'll get you your giveaway prize that you won. So there's that. And the winner of this giveaway, where's my, my notepad? Um, the winner of the giveaway from last week was Leslie Monzen. Hopefully I'm saying your name right. So congratulations, Leslie. You have won this fun skein of what I'm pretty sure is knit collage and this little or bi big notions bag that I have made. So you have won. So hit me up on my email or on my Instagram and I'll get this out to you. And like I said, give me um, some ideas as to what kind of bag fabrics you guys like and we will give this one away on the next podcast. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care, stay safe, and get vaccinated.